the madman. So hello, hello, live from BlizzCon 2017. It's Trump, and I'm here to talk to you about Kobolds and Catacombs, which is the seventh expansion in Hearthstone. The information, here's the quick facts. Expansion releases December 2017, 135 new cards. All classes are getting a legendary weapon, including classes that didn't traditionally get weapons. A new mechanic called Recruit. Recruit is you take a, it's basically the Yashiraj effect. You summon a minion from your deck, it gets pulled from your deck and just gets pull, put directly into play. New type of single player content called Dungeon Runs. Had the chance to try a bit of that over at BlizzCon. It's actually really, really cool single player content and it's free and you don't even need anything to go into it because you just start off with a default deck. You start off with a weak deck, and then as you adventure and you gather through some loot, as you defeat some bosses, you get stronger and stronger, and then you fight stronger and stronger bosses. The Dungeons and Dragons, like, inner part of me really loves that aspect. I'm certainly going to beat it with all nine classes. And as you may have just heard from Yomaro, special card back for the person who, for the people who actually managed to beat that mode with all nine classes. It's going to be a lot of fun. 48 unique encounters, assortment of new cards created just for this mode. It's sick, man. Uh, in the actual gameplay that I did through the demo, there's some really sick abilities that you can do. For example, you might be a mage and then you start off with a one mana hero power that deals two damage. There are cards in this mode where obviously you can only have in this mode because they're so ridiculously powerful. I had the option to choose between Bag of Coins or Gloves of Mugging or Wand of Disintegration. Wand of Disintegration is a three mana twisting nether which also silences everyone. Gloves of Mugging is a six card card advantage card since you are stealing three cards from your opponent. Bag of Coins, zero mana, like get all the coins. That could be pretty gross. The really cool thing about the dungeon runs is that since each run is different and you're presented with a choice of three each time in terms of which cards you want to put in and which hero power upgrade you want to choose and you know which passive upgrade you want to choose, there's no right way to do it and there's no like set guide on how to pre-build your deck. It's just all very free fl flowing. Uh, I'll be making a video on like beating it with all the classes so you can see how my journey went and you can try to kind of emulate it but it's very very cool. In terms of freebies for this expansion all players will receive a mirror in the fox it turns out that it's going to be given away on this Monday, this upcoming Monday, so that's November 6th uh, and for everyone who had a virtual ticket they're getting a golden version of Marin the fox. Uh, everyone also gets one free legendary weapon when the expansion is launched so that's a good segue into the card review. So we're going to start with Marin the Fox. Marin the Fox, 8 mana, 6-6. Six, six. Summon a 0-8 treasure chest for your opponent. Break it for awesome loot. Here's the awesome loot. 3 mana, golden kobold, 6-6 six, six, taunt. Feels like the golden monkey, except you're just replacing your hand with legendary minions. Obviously, 3 mana, 6-6 six, six is really powerful. Tolan's Goblet, draw a card, fill your hand with copies of it. Fill your hand. So that's potentially, if you only have Tolan's Goblet in your hand, Basically, draw 10 cards. Wondrous Wand, 3 mana, draw 3 cards, reduce their cost to 0. And Xerox Crown, 3 mana, discover a legendary minion, summon 2 copies of it. So, if you were to summon a, if you were to discover a 10 mana cost legendary, you would basically be paying 3 mana to put 20 mana worth of cards into play. No Battle Cry, of course. Calculating the average kind of mana benefit of this, if you think the mana benefit, if you think every single wor one of these effects is worth, like, say, on average, 12 mana, which was my quick napkin math, and you're paying 3 mana for it, you're gaining 9 mana on that. So, what does that mean? It means Marin the Fox uh, can be said to be an 8 mana 6-6 six, six, and gain a 9 mana effect uh, after you do the work of killing a 0-8 treasure chest. So, pretty big benefit. And we're going to see plenty of this card being experimented with because we're going to see it very soon for the remaining part of the meta. Uh, is that actually that good? Well, it turns out a lot of these decks are doing very unfair things these days. Like uh, summoning jades. One mana f to summon a 10-10 jade, for example, is kind of cheating nine mana out of a card already. Uh, let's see, machine gunning people down with priest. 
you are basically spending zero mana for deal two damage repetitively. And that's super cheating because each two mana effect is like a Holy Smite, which is a decent card. It's even in that deck. Basically, put that into perspective, the way of cheating an extra 10 mana of value, it's really hard to beat certain decks in terms of value right now, which is why, and I'm only going to do it for this card, I rate this card a one-star card for this meta because we're only going to see one card released into this meta. And it's a fun one, Marin the Fox. Uh, but compared to the value gained from a Jade Druid and from Priest, uh, you're just not going to get enough value out of this Marin the Fox thing. It's kind of the same reason why Cthune and Elementals aren't played right now. You get value out of them, but it's not enough. Okay, Dragon Soul. Three mana Priest Legendary Weapon. After you cast three spells in a turn, summon a 5-5 Dragon. By the way, you don't lose durability whenever this thing happens. The card to compare this with is the Rogue Card Sherizen. For three mana, you are paying three mana to do nothing, starting with that. And then you need to cast three spells to summon a 5-5. Five five. That seems awfully difficult to do. It's not that tough because you can put it in Raza Priest, and I'm sure some people are going to try, but it's just purely superfluous because once you are casting three spells a turn, you're already doing really well with that type of priest. So Dragon Soul, I predict, is going to be a pretty weak card. Lesser Jasper Spellstone is a druid card featuring the new mechanic. Every single class is also getting a Spellstone. Uh, one mana deal two damage to a minion, but it upgrades itself. So each time you gain three armor, it upgrades. Uh, first time you upgrade it to a Jasper Spellstone, and we had Jomara kind of talking us through the art. The item looks more and more epic as you upgrade it, of course. So... Jasper Spellstone, one mana deal, four damage to a minion. Boy, does that get good. So how are you going to gain the three armor? Well, you have the hero power. You can also become the Death Knight, and then you gain three armor each time you hit the button. That's pretty interesting. Uh, one mana deal four, one mana deal six. Will the card be actually good enough? Because one mana deal two to a minion is already pretty decent. Uh, this one has some serious potential, I'd say. Hunter gets a new secret. Wandering Monster. It's like Get Down. Uh, you actually block with your three cost minion. And it's a two mana, two, three noble sacrifice instead of one mana, two, one. Is that good? It seems bad if I compare it that way. Crushing walls. Seven mana, destroy your opponent's left and right most minions. Very cool idea here. It is a more positioning matters card, and it's clearly made for control hunter. My main problem with this card is that I feel like they could have pushed the envelope with it for six mana. I don't think this is, I think this is just cost too high to see any play whatsoever. Now Mage is getting an absolutely insane looking card. Aluneth, six mana legendary. At the end of your turn, draw three cards. To recap, Nourish costs five mana and you see that played all the time. Aluneth, you're guaranteed drawing three cards with it for Five mana, and then just for one more mana, you get the potential to draw an extra three cards every single turn. So I'm making the pre-call that this is basically like Ultimate Infestation version two. What's up? 15 minutes. Okay. Oh man, we have to finish the rest of the review in 15 minutes. So absolutely insane. Hello, Ultimate Infestation again. At least this time it's legendary, right? So people are afraid of the idea that. Once you start drawing, you're never drawing. It's kind of like going full Northshire. So here's the flaw of that idea. Going full Northshire is fantastic in an aggro deck. It's so absolutely disgusting in, a car, in an already existing archetype, such as Secret Mage or General Tempo Mage, that this is a natural fit into that deck. It's absolutely crazy. Paladin gets an interesting new toy, a Kobold. You're going to see a lot of Kobolds in this expansion. 2 mana, 1, 1, Death Rattle, add 3 Silver Hand Recruits to your hand. Now, that doesn't sound that inspiring. However, when you're playing any hand buff card, you are buffing 3 cards. Wow. Unidentified Elixir. There are a few unidentified cards in this expansion. Uh, it's kind of a small mini mechanic as well. The idea of this card is you put it into your deck and it will say just give a minion plus two plus two plus gains a bonus effect in your hand. So that means when you draw the card, you will find out what this elixir is, basically identifying it. And for the priest one, here's what it can be. It can either be plus two plus two lifesteal, plus two plus two divine shield, 
Plus two, plus two, summon a new copy of it. One, one copy. Plus two, plus two, death rattle return this minion to your hand. Now, normally, in your priest deck, or in any deck which wants to put buffs in it, which would be a, card, a deck like Zoo, a deck like Shaman, you need to run a lot of early game minions. Now, is there a priest deck that runs early game minions? Uh, there's kind of a dragon deck going around. Maybe there's a priest Zoo deck. But currently, it doesn't seem like that'll even fit here. The other problem is that two of these results are value-oriented and two of them are aggressive. The lifesteal is absolutely useless to a zoo deck generally, and the death rattle return the minion to your hand is kind of too slow. And the 1-1 one, one copy is kind of weakish. Divine shields, I'm not really seeing it, but maybe the other unidentified cards are really good. Rogues! Really interesting. 4-mana, three, 3-3, three, three, Cobalt Illusionist. Death rattle summon a 1-1 one, one copy of minion f from your hand. That is a lot like the... Priest one. Uh, Rogue has a lot more interesting things to play with in this respect. It is a death rattle, so it's a bit slower. Shaman is also getting one of these spell stones here. Seven mana, summon one copy of a friendly minion. So unlike that one mana druid spell stone, this spell stone is terrible when you cast the base form of it. Uh, so clearly you're going to try to put this into a deck where you overload three mana crystals to upgrade. And you're upgrading it to summon two copies of a friendly minion. That actually suddenly turns very appealing. Because in Shaman, you can actually play buffs on your minions. I've played this big Shaman deck before with Ancestral Spirit and Earth Elemental. So imagine this. You play your Earth Elemental, you put Ancestral Spirit on it, and that by itself has already unlocked the level 2 Sapphire Spellstone. So when you play your Sapphire Spellstone on your Earth Elemental, you're getting three Earth Elementals, which summon three Earth Elementals. <laughs> Wow. And then the final version is summon three copies of a friendly minion. Warlock is getting a very flashy card. Rin the First Disciple. Six mana, three, six taunts. What's exciting is Death Rattle. Add the first seal to your hand. So this is like the ultimate Timmy card. All right. So once you manage to accomplish that, the first seal is a five mana, summon a two, two. So you have to basically get through the action of killing Rin off first and making sure it doesn't get silenced. And then you go through this entire process. You have to summon a f you have to use five mana to summon a two two. Then you get the second steal. You have to use five mana to summon a three three. Then you get the third steal. You have to use five mana to summon a five five. Hey, that's actually okay. The fourth steal, five mana, summon a five five. Add the final seal, summon a six six demon. Add Azari the Devourer to your hand. By the way, all of these are demons, which means when you play your ten mana Death Knight, you will get all these demons back. So that's a thing. So Azari is the big payoff. 10 mana, 10, 10, destroy your opponent's deck. So basically when you play Azari, you are usually winning. But in order to do that, you had to get through 25 mana worth of seals and the 6 mana Rin, that's 31 mana, 10 mana, 41 mana. So obviously getting here is really tough. However, destroying your opponent's deck is pretty good against certain control decks, such as Jade Druid, such as Raza Priest, we're going to see if there's some way to speed up this ritual. Uh, maybe it's not even required speeding up the ritual in order to get there. Uh, if, like, a serious amount of control decks are there. We'll see. All right, warrior. Six mana, gather your party. This is the recruit mechanic. Recruit a minion. So recruiting means take a random minion from your deck and put it into play. So that sounds terrible, right? It's like mind games. But unlike mind games, you can actually build your deck. Big Priest has a 6-mana version of this, which is putting a copy of a 5-5 five five into play. And that's played mostly to resurrect, but this skips the middle man, just puts it into play. So that's a 6-mana Yesera, that's a 6-mana Yashiraz, that's a 6-mana Lich King. That's really good. I see some very serious potential with this card, and we'll see whether or not more big minions get played, get printed. We've got a Carnivorous Cube here, 5-mana 4-6, fine stats. Uh, Battle Cry, destroy a friendly minion, Death Rattle summon two copies of it. So the goal here is to, the dream is to play it on a minion that's already been weakened, and then you summon two copies of it. By the way, summoning two copies of it means that you don't have the negative battle cry effect, and or, you well, you basically don't have negative battle cry effect. So it's really good on a card such as Injured Blade Master as a quick idea. If you play it on a minion that was wounded already, then, you know, you basically gain value by killing off a minion that has lost a lot of its value, and then you get two copies of it at full health later. So, interesting stuff. Might see some cubing. 
Guild Recruiter. Five mana, two, four, battle cry. Recruit a minion that costs four or less. Again, this is a random effect. So if you were to only run Injured Blade Masters in your deck uh, as your four or less cards, and then you played two copies of Guild Recruiter, this is a five mana, two, four, which summons a five mana, four, seven. Wow. You don't get the downside, so if you have only Faceless... Flame Reef Faceless in your deck, then you play the Guild Recruiter, and then you're getting 4 mana 7-7 seven, seven alongside with it. Nice. So, we'll see. The goal of these Recruit decks are clearly going to be to really severely limit the cards in your deck. That's it. We did it! We did it! Holy cow, we made it in time.